Hello and welcome back to Stop and Go Formula One, the second video of today, the second of three videos, as we're talking about Formula Two. Now, if you didn't see my Formula Three video, I'll let me just explain. Um, as much as I have watched Formula One seemingly forever, I've never fully got into the feeder series of Formula Three and Formula Two. So this is my first proper series, first proper season, sorry, of watching Formula Two. So if I get things wrong, pronounce people's names wrong, say something wrong, just let me know in the comments. And we can all learn together as we discuss what was a marvelous weekend for Formula Two. And when talking about this weekend, you can't talk, you can't talk about Formula Two this weekend without talking about tail poor chair because oh my god is he good in qualifying his first um when he set his fastest lap initially it was nearly a second faster than anyone else that would be cut down but only to seven temps faster than everyone else he seems to just be in a different league at the minute he's just unbelievably good he's part of the sauber Driving Academy. Sauber currently in Formula 1 as Alfa Romeo. And that may seem like a bit of a strange one to sign for, especially when Formula 2 is so full of people who are in the Red Bull Academy, or the Ferrari Academy, or the Alpine Academy, or the Mercedes Academy. But when you think about it, this could be incredibly good for Theo Porcher, as... The Sauber team will be coming the Audi team in 2026. And if you hear all the rumours about all the money Audi is putting behind their Formula 1 venture, having a young driver like Theo Porcher in there could be very interesting. So I would not be surprised if in 2026, when Audi come along to Formula 1, one of their drivers will be Theo Porcher, who is looking extremely likely in the first race to win the Formula 2 title this year. Let's talk about the um, Formula 2 Sprint then. So, my first note is Theo Porcher is so good, but Arthur Leclerc was taking it to him. Arthur Leclerc is the younger brother of Charles Leclerc, in case you weren't aware. Uh, Arthur Leclerc, though, got a penalty for starting infringement. Now, I spoke about starting infringement in the form of the free video as well, because we've had a lot of them this weekend. I didn't have any in the feature race for Formula 2, but we did for the sprint, and we had them in the sprint and feature race for Formula 3. We'll have to wait and see if any arise in Formula 1, but it looks like something that the stewards are trying to clamp down on very strongly <laughs> this year. Um, Victor Martins is very impressive for a rookie, is my next next note here. Lots of rookies in Formula 2 this year. Lots of them very impressive. We'll get on to one who really impressed me in the feature race as I go on. But then my notes is basically just a page of I love Iwasa. Iwasa is very impressive. He's incredible. His sprint race performance is one of the best racing performances I've seen in a long time. He His defensive driving is incredible. You have to overtake him like three or four times if you want to stay ahead of him. Because you'll get up, you'll get past, you'll think, oh, I've got him now. Then two corners later, he's in front of you again. He was insanely good. He's so much fun to watch. It seems like he isn't up there in terms of like Theo Porcher, but within the rest, there's definitely a lot he can do. Uh, he won two races last year. I'm hoping he wins a few more. He's part of the Red Bull Driver Academy, and he's looking incredible. Another name that I knew going in was Ollie Behrman. Now, he uh, was in Formula 3 last year. I think he finished second in Formula 3, and he's making his uh, rookie debut for Formula 2. And the reason I know him is he's very good on F1 Manager, so I've got him there. Also, he's a British driver driving for the Ferrari Academy, which is just interesting. I mean, what was the last time a British driver drove for Ferrari in F1? Was it... Is it Nigel Mansell? It might be. I'd have to check that, but it's been it's been a while, so he's definitely an interesting name for the future. He got the fastest lap in the sprint in the sprint race. Also, at this point, I was just learning people in Formula Formula Two, and I discovered someone called Kush Miney, and I've written Kush Miney, what a name! And then I've written MP Motorsport looks like that awful McLaren Honda, where it's the uh, orange, the black, and the white. It looked awful. MP Motorsport decided to pay tribute to that awful, awful car. 
Dennis Hauger made a fantastic overtake for P2 in the sprint race, but it was Ralph Boschong who took the win in the Formula 2 sprint race. Apparently, like this is his like 90-something race and his first win. He looked really good in the sprint, and he would look really good in the feature race, as we will get on to now. It was Teo Pontre on pole, as we have already said. The start was a madness. Our favourite, Kush Miney, went from 6th to 2nd, Within like two or three corners. Although the best start was Theo Portrait, who basically, as the lights went out, just went and just created a gap and basically had that gap for the entire race. There was a bit near the start where he looked like, oh, maybe he could have a bit of a challenge here, but as we go on, we'll realise he was gone. There was a safety car basically instantly, very similar to uh, the Formula 3 sprint race. Um. I put here, Vasseur starts third, goes second, he got hit, and then was 21st. So, quite a few uh, first corners there for him, but I think he, I can't remember where he actually finished. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, because I don't know where he finished. He ended up finishing fifth, which is, so, <laughs> he started third, got second in the first corner, got hit, went 21st, and ended up finishing 5th. So Richard Vasseur, very, very good race for him. Now let's talk about Ralph Boschong, the winner of the sprint race. He started 10th and went to 3rd in one lap. That's how mad this opening lap was here. Uh, this is where I discovered something about Formula 2, is that they have mandatory pit stops, just like Formula 1 do. But in Formula 2, if you take your mandatory pit stop before lap 6, it doesn't count and you have to do another one. Which basically means if you have a lap 1 incident, you're even more screwed than you were before. Which is very unfair to those guys, but there you go. I don't make the rules. This is when I discovered that everyone's favourite, Ollie Behrman, was in 4th. And, oh wow, it was a bit of a roller coaster for a race for him, as we'll carry on going on. Uh, Boshong went from third to second on the restart. Very good move from him. And it looked like maybe he could take it to Teo Porcher as well. He was very close off the restart, but he was on the softer tyre. Uh, Dennis Hauger, very interesting one, during the safety car, he pulled into the pits and retired the car. But when the safety car went in, he came back out and returned to the race five laps down on the rest of the grid. But I've never seen that before. I've never seen a car retire and then just come back out. So that was a new one for me. Uh, Porcher was first in the pits before Boshong, despite... Pocher being on the harder tyres, and I thought here, well maybe we're onto something here, maybe Ralph Boschong is the tyre whisperer, and he can take it to feel Poch Tail Pocher. He couldn't. But once Boschong had pits, Tail Pocher took the lead of the race, and didn't look back. Uh, we had some very interesting racing though for the remaining grid slots, because uh, Arthur Leclerc and Ollie Behrman properly getting their elbows out here, that was a lot of fun to watch. Um, uh, Porsche had a 12 second lead with 16 laps to go, and that would only get bigger. Uh, Leclerc, though, Arthur Leclerc, very interesting race for him, because he seemed to have quite a good handle on everything, then all of a sudden, for about 3 or 4 laps, completely forgot how to drive. Massive lock up into turn 10 and went off, and he uh, lost third place. Then, Half a lap later, he had another off and went down to 6th place. This was when Dennis Hauger retired for the second time in the race, and we had a fantastic battle between Zane Maloney and Ollie Behrman for P4. Zane Maloney, wow, um, I'm going to name my hero of the race early, my hero of, P of F2. It's not the one who necessarily was the best, but the one who entertained me the most, and that was Zane Maloney. Oh my god, the man from Barbados. He's a Red Bull junior. He's a, a rookie in F2. My goodness, he was good. If there's anyone who could take it to Teo Portrait, maybe it's him. We'll get on to him later on, but he qualified P18 and made fantastic moves. If he'd qualified in a decent place, maybe he could have been the one 
to take it to Mr. Porcher. We'll have to wait and see. Um, so Zane Maloney was able to get past Ollie Behrman for fourth place and was like instantly building a gap. And it was Cushmine in third, the final podium position. And he seemed to be like 15, 16 seconds ahead of him. So, you know, it's a big ask. But Zane Maloney was just on something else. The speed he had was unbelievable. We then got two of my favourites, Iwasa and Behrman, battling for fifth. Neither of these people know how to just give in and say no, because elbows out all the way, absolutely fantastic. Somehow, Arthur Leclerc manages to join this battle as well, despite everything he went through in the race. He caught up again. Leclerc was able to pass Iwasa, and then one lap later, in the exact same place, passed Behrman. This is when we discovered there was something seriously wrong with Behrman's tyres. They were completely gone. He'd been kind of holding on to P4 for the majority of the race, but that all fell apart in the last few laps. But also in the last few laps, Maloney catched up, caught up with Cushmine and was able to get past him, completing P18 to P3. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic race for him. The opposite happened to Ollie Behrman, who uh, went from P4 for the majority of the race to end up finishing P14. His tyres just went. He pushed too hard at the start, and he just had nothing at the end, and just everyone just passed him. So we had the winner, who was Teo Porcher, winning by nearly 20 seconds. Uh, Ralph Boschong came in second, so that's uh, two podiums for him on the weekend. And then Zane Maloney in third. Absolutely fantastic. Great race from the guys in F2. Um, Alex Jakes, the commentator, was very uh, adamant to insist that you won't see 20-second leads in F2 all the time, and we'll be back to very close racing next time. We'll see, because Teo Pocher seems to be on something else uh, from this race. Hopefully, if Zay Maloney can get his qualifying in order, maybe he can challenge too. That would be very interesting to see. But there's so many very, very, very talented guys on the F2 field. You've got Ralph Bash Boschong, uh, Kush Miney looked very good, Isaac Hajar was up there, Arthur Leclerc looks good, Iwasa, of course. Um, I think Oli Behrman, he has the talent there as well. I think he can compete. Of course, he's also a rookie. Maybe he made a few mistakes here, but you could see when he was going wheel to wheel with people, he's very, very, very good. So I think we're in for a good year of Formula 2 here, and from what I've heard, there's never been a bad year of Formula 2. So let's wait and see. So we only have one race left this weekend. Formula 3, they've been and gone. Formula 2, they've been and gone. The only one left is Formula 1. Max Verstappen is on pole, Sergio Perez alongside him. The Ferraris make up the second row. Then you've got Fernando Alonso in there, Aston Martin. What can he do? And then there's the Mercedes. It should be a very interesting race. If the Formula 2 and Formula 3 are anything to go by, it should be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Make sure you subscribe because I'll be back up here to talk all things Formula 1 once that race is done. But for now, that is all for Formula 2. Formula 2 will be back in Saudi Arabia, so I'll be back here to talk about Formula 2 then. But until later on for the Formula 1 race, goodbye.